Hi, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to go over common stock. We're going to look at dividends. We're going to look at a different type of distribution. So let's get started first by uh, reminding you to please subscribe to our video if you can. I, we'd really appreciate that. Now let's move on. Uh, common stock. Common stock is the ownership of the corporation. So a corporation will issue shares and owners will then purchase those shares or potential owners, investors will purchase those shares and then they will be owners of that corporation. So let's look at an example of an issuance of common stock, this ownership in the corporation. So let's use an example that this corporation is issuing 10,000 shares of common stock. The par value on these shares is $20 per share, but they're actually selling for $30 per share. So the par value, the amount that's kind of written on, on the share is $20, but they can sell for more or less, okay? In this example, they're selling for uh, $30. So our journal entry is first to debit cash. So we're gonna take the 10,000 shares times $30 per share, and we'll get 300,000. So you can see here in the journal entry, we're going to debit cash, $300,000. Now our credit, there's two parts to this because the par value is $20. So we're going to debit common stock, comma $20 par value for the $20. So $20 times the 10,000 shares is $200,000. So there's that credit. Our journal entry doesn't bounce. So we need another 100,000 credit. So that's going to be to this new account called paid in capital in excess of par dash common or common stock. That's a long title for the account, but that's just the, that's just what we use, okay? Because what we're doing is where we are. We're paying into the capital of the business. We're paying in excess of the par value. How much? Well, in this case, $10 per share in excess. So $10 times the 10,000 shares gets us $100,000. So that's our journal entry for the issuance of this common stock. Now, we call this par value stock. Uh, there's something called stated value also. It works the same way, just a different name. Most corporations use the term par value. Uh, you can also issue stock with no par value whatsoever, right? It just depends on uh, how states have declared uh, how corporations are gonna do it, okay? Now, let's move into cash dividends. So if a corporation wants to declare dividends, they want to uh, pay out some money to their shareholders, they can do this in many ways. One of the most popular ways is through a cash dividend. So there are three dates that we have to be aware of for a cash dividend. The first date is the date of declaration, the date that the board of directors will declare this dividend. The second date is the date of record. So this date will take place later, you know, after the date of declaration. And this is the date where the corporation will look to see who actually owns the shares. And those shareholders, those owners on that date of record, they're the ones that are actually gonna get paid the dividend. Because you gotta remember that a lot of these shares are probably being bought and sold on the, on the stock market. Well, who's gonna get it? Because maybe one day you own it and another day somebody else owns it. Well, the people that own it on the date of record will be the ones that will receive this dividend. The third date that we wanna be aware of is the date of payment. This is the date that the payment is actually made to those people of, on the date of record, okay? So those people that owned it on the date of record will get this payment on the date of payment. So let's take a look at an example. Let's assume that the corporation or that the board of directors, let's assume that they declare a, a dividend of $10,000 on March 1st. The date of record is going to be March 10th. And then the date of payment will be March 25th. So there are three dates. On March 1st, this is the, the journal entry that we would record. We would debit retained earnings. Now remember, a debit to retained earnings decreases it because they're gonna be paying out a dividend. So they need to decrease part of the equity in the company because they're paying out money. So we're going to debit retained earnings or some people debit dividends. That's okay, you can debit dividends if you want to. And then later when we close out our revenues and expenses, will also close out dividends to the retained earnings account. So you can debit retained earnings now, or you can do it later, and we could debit dividends now. So either one is acceptable. Then our credit will be to common dividend payable, because we're not paying it yet, 
but we're going to record a liability. So that's where we're going to credit common dividend payable $10,000. Now, the date of record, I said, was March 10th. So whoever owned the shares at the end of the day on March 10th are the ones that are, are, are the people or businesses that are going to get this dividend. Then on March 25th is the date of payment. So on the date of payment, we have to eliminate that liability. So we're going to debit common dividend payable, $10,000. And then we're going to credit cash because we're actually paying the dividend out. All right, so that's a cash dividend. So another type of dividend is a stock dividend. And this is when the corporation, instead of paying out cash to their shareholders, they pay out a dividend in stock of that corporation. Now, there are two different types of stock dividends. We can have a small stock dividend and a large stock dividend. Let's look at each. A small stock dividend is when they pay out 25% or less of stock in that is currently outstanding in that corporation. So for example, uh, if they have 10,000 shares outstanding, then if they uh, distributed 2,500 or less, that would be a small stock dividend. So we're gonna use the same three dates, the date of declaration, the date of record, and the date of payment, but instead of cash, we're gonna be doing this according to a stock dividend. So let's use this example. Let's say that they're declaring a 15% stock dividend on April 1st. For those people that are owners as of April 15th, that's the date of record, and the distribution date will be April 25th. All right, so uh, more information we need to know. Uh, there are currently 10,000 shares outstanding. There may be more shares, but the only ones that are outstanding right now are 10,000 shares. The market value for these shares is $5, but the par value is $1. So right now they're selling on the marketplace at $5 per share, but the par value is $1 per share, okay? Well, we're gonna calculate this using that $5 per share though, since this is a small stock dividend. It's gonna be different for a large stock dividend, so make sure you note this difference when we get to the large stock dividend. So here's our journal entry. We're going to now debit retained earnings or dividends. So this is very similar so far to our cash dividend. We're gonna take that $5 market value and multiply that by the number of shares in this stock dividend. Well, the number of shares is the 10,000 shares times that percentage that I gave you. And that percentage was uh, 15%. So 10,000 times 15% is 1,500 shares. So 1,500 shares times the $5, which is the market value right now, gets us 7,500. So that's the amount that we're going to credit in our journal entry. So you can see here, we're going to debit retained earnings or dividends. Remember, this is very similar to our cash dividend uh, journal entry. We're going to credit common stock dividend distributable. Okay, so that's a, that's a new name for us, right? So this means that we're going to be distributing common stock, but we haven't distributed it yet, all right? So we can't, we can't debit, I'm sorry, we can't credit the common stock account yet because we haven't actually issued them. So it's a distributable account, all right? And that will be for 1,500 because we're gonna take the 1,500 shares times the par value. So we're using this account at its par value. Now, the excess amount of par is $4 per share. The five minus the par value of one gets us $4 per share. So we're gonna take that 1,500 shares times the $4 per share, and that will get us $6,000. So we're going to credit paid in capital in excess of the par dash common stock. Okay, so that's our journal entry on the date of declaration. The date of record, there's no journal entry. Okay, remember, we need no journal entry on the date of record. We just, we just, the corporation is just gonna see who owns the stock on that day because those are the people that will get this dividend. So then on the date of distribution, we're, we have to eliminate this common stock dividend distributable. So we will debit that account, the $1,500, and now we will credit common stock $1 par value for the $1,500, because now these shares have been distributed to the owners of record. So that's a small cash dividend. A large cash dividend is when we're gonna distribute 25, more than 25% of the current shares that are outstanding, right? So let's take a look at this example. Let's say that we have a 
uh, stock dividend uh, on June 1st, the date of record will be June 8th, and the date of distribution will be June 15th. There are currently, in this example, 10,000 shares. The par value for this example is $2. So this is a different corporation, right? Even though I'm using the same number of 10,000 shares. It's a different corporation because the par value is $2 par value per share. Okay, well, if we're distributing 30%, then we're gonna take 30% times the 10,000 shares. That gets us 3,000. This is a large stock dividend. We're not gonna look at the current market value. We're going to calculate this uh, journal entry using the par value and the par value only, okay? We're not gonna do any uh, paid in capital and excess of par. So in that sense, this is actually easier for us. All right, so on the date of distribution on June 1st, we're going to once again debit retained earnings or dividends, and we're gonna debit it $6,000. Because remember, it's 10,000 shares, 30% is the uh, dividend, so that's 3,000, but the par value is $2. So 3,000 shares times $2 par value per share gets us the $6,000. And then our credit will be to that same account, common stock dividend distributable, 6,000. Then the date of record, there's no journal entry, but we will make sure that we know uh, who owned the stock at that date because those are the shareholders that are going to get this stock dividend. And then on June 15th is the date of distribution, so we have to eliminate that common stock dividend distributable, $6,000. We're now going to credit common stock $2 par value for $6,000 because now we've issued those shares. Now we're going to look at a stock split. A stock split is different than a stock dividend because what's gonna happen here is we're going to split our stock. So the corporation is going to call in the shares and then reissue additional shares to those same shareholders. Okay, so it's an, a distribution of additional shares to shareholders of record on that date. All right, so let's look at this example. Let's say uh, before this stock split, uh, we had 10,000 shares. And let's make this easy. Let's say this is a stock split two for one. Okay, it could be anything. It could be three for one, four for one, 10 for one, you know, whatever the corporation wants to do. But a two for one means that if I own one share, then after this stock split, I'm gonna own two shares, two for one, okay? If I own 10 shares, then how many will I own after the stock split? Well, two for one, if I own 10, then it will jump to 20, okay? So we have 10,000 shares at $2 par value per share. Now, after the stock split, you know, nothing changes in our equity section per se, okay? None of the dollar amounts are gonna change. The only thing that's gonna change is the number of shares that we have outstanding in the new par value. Because before, let's say that we had uh, 10,000 shares, like I said, now we're gonna have 20,000 shares. So we have to have in our financial statements that we now have 20,000 shares. The par value was $2. We've gotta cut that in half. So now the par value is gonna be $1. Because remember, the total dollar amount in common stock was 10,000 shares times $2 par value or $20,000. Well, now we've got 20,000 shares, $1 par value, because that 20,000 can't change, right? Our common stock value of 20,000 has to stay the same. So all that's happening here is the shareholders are getting additional shares. So that's a stock split. So in today's video, we went over issuance of common stock, we went over stock dividends, cash dividends, stock splits. This is a lot of information. You might wanna watch this video again just to see how these journal entries work. And then also make sure you take a look at your textbook because I'm sure they'll have very good examples there for you too. All right, in the next video, we're gonna go over preferred stock. So stay tuned for that and good luck and please subscribe to our channel.